Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. It is wonderful to see you this morning. You are a little lopsided today. Um, didn't evenly distribute yourselves, but you guys are wearing a lot more green than they did out at Faith. So I love the festivity. It is joyous. It brings me much joy to celebrate and to uh, worship the Lord with you when we're in a festive mood. Today is the fifth Sunday of Lent. The 40 days of Lent are coming to a close as we approach Holy Week beginning next Sunday. From scripture today, Peter's posture towards Jesus is that of an open book. He's eager to learn from Jesus all that he can. Today, this gospel story is about the nature of forgiveness and grace, reminding us to forgive again and again and again and again. Let us gather together for worship. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who seeks our wandering hearts, who draws all people to the living font, Jesus. Amen. Friends, when we study Peter's story in scripture, it's almost impossible to ignore how much he loved to ask questions. He asked Jesus, how, what does this parable mean? Where are you going? How many times should we forgive? Unlike a tenacious toddler, Peter was full of questions. Because Peter was eager, eager to learn, I wish I was more like that. I still have so much to learn. So friends, let us be like Peter. Let us return to Christ with humility of a student as we pray together the prayer of confession. Let us be, let this be a moment of learning. Let us pray. Holy God, we long to be lifelong learners. We long to approach you with curiosity and an open mind. Instead, we all often live as if we confess. We forget that the disciples called you our teacher. Forgive us for the times when we fail to be curious. Forgive us for the times when we assume we know best. Forgive us for the moments when we imagine that our learning is done, and then we have all the answers. Like Peter, who was brave enough to ask, how many times should we forgive? Make us brave, spark a desire in us to learn, and then may our curiosity carry our faith into deeper waters with an open humility through your age. Amen. Family of faith. When Peter asked Jesus, Jesus, how many times should I forgive? Jesus responded with abundance. That abundance exists for you as well. No matter what you have done or left undone, no matter what lessons you have earned or are still learning, God's abundant grace exists for you. God's love will never run out. So hear and rest in this good news. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are invited to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Our opening hymnal, our opening hymn is in this hymnal, hymn number six.
Wow, was that a throwback for anyone else? <laughs> Please join me in the prayer of the day as printed in your bulletin. Let us pray, teaching God, we want to learn your ways, forgiveness, grace, and love. That is part of why we return to your text week after week, because we are hungry to be more like you. So as we prepare to listen to your good word, call on the noise of our arms, center our spirits and focus on you, so that we might learn and hear what we have missed in the story before. God, we want to learn your grace. We have to speak your truth. Help us listen. Amen. You may be seated for our scripture reading. reading today is from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, verses 31 through 34. The Judeans in Babylon blamed their exile on their ancestors who had broken the covenant established at Sinai. Here the prophet looks to a day when God will make a new covenant with the people. There will be no need to teach the law because God will write it on their hearts. Verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read responsibly Psalm 119, 9 through 16. How shall the young keep their way clean? By keeping to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart. That I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips I recite all, all the judgments of your mouth. I take greater, greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Please stand. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. 
Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. And Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Any and all children of God are invited forward for the children's message. Good morning, guys. Come on, Chandler. You need someone smart, another smart person up here. Oh, we got so many smart people. You're gonna need it. So the past few Sundays, we've been hanging these markers on our mat behind the altar. And those markers are telling us how close and how far along on the journey with Peter we're getting. We're all, we're, it says about halfway across the map. There's a couple more worship services, then we hit Easter, and then one more Sunday after Easter, and we're at the end of Peter's journey. So I have another one where you guys gotta guess what the object is on my map, on my marker, okay? You guys got your thinking hats on? Ready? What do you think this is? A Bible. Ooh, you think it's a Bible? A book. Any other guess? Now see, you got a guess? What is this? A book. They're all saying this is a Bible or a book, so Bible is a book. Is there any other guesses out here? No? <laughs> it is a book. I didn't know if it would trip you or not. It is a book. Do you guys like reading? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> you know what? My brother hates reading, but I love reading. That's okay. It really is. Some people just reading is not fun. Other people love reading. You guys love it when your mom and dad read or grandma. No. You, is Grandma not good at reading books? Maybe I don't know. Okay. Okay. We will not throw Grandma under the bus. Today we learned how Peter was talking to Jesus, and he was taught something new. Peter, he he made mistakes. He had ups and downs. Sometimes he did a good job, and Jesus praised him. And other times he still had a lot to learn from Jesus. So today we're learning of how Peter was learning something new. Do you guys learn anything new when you go to Sunday school? You don't? I do. You do. You must have a really good teacher then. Maybe. You don't. I think you guys have pretty awesome teachers. And I think they do a really good job trying to teach you. That's one of the things we're supposed to do in the church is teach each other, whether it's in Sunday school or Bible study, or you stay in worship and learn from the sermon or through the songs. We're all supposed to learn from the word Jesus teaches us. So I'm going to hang this up on our map, and you all are going to learn and go be taught by your teachers. What are some great ways to be good students? You guys know how to be good students? What's something you have to do to be a good student? Listen. Can you guys be good listeners today in Sunday school? Oh, yeah, you can. Are you going to be listen today in Sunday school? Her mom's a teacher. Her mom's a teacher, so then she is going to listen good today. Okay. You think... So all the grown, all the older people in the congregation, that means everyone that's older than second grade, are going to stay and listen to the sermon to be taught. How do you think they can be good 
students to be taught today. All these people listen. Who do they gotta listen to though? Who's their teacher? I'm their teacher. So that means they can't fall asleep. Means you can't fall asleep in class either. <laughs> All right, Abby. Abby says it's time to go. So can you walk super slow? Calm down. Slower to study school. Slower and good listening skills. And they haven't got good listening skills today if they can't walk slow. All right. Hopefully you guys have some listening skills. Another marker across the map as we journey with Peter figuring out this uh, faith and journey of faith and what it is. It seems like we're only halfway across this map, but then you throw in how many worship services there are next week with Holy Week, and there's one for each one. So we're crossing our way across the map. If I may be so bold today, allow me. You know, at baptism, we as a congregation, not just the parents or sponsors, make a commitment to bring the baptized child to the Word of God, teaching them the Ten Commandments, bringing them to the sacraments. Now, we all have different gifts according to the Spirit. However, if we're all committed to those baptismal promises we make as a congregation, we collectively say that we do promise. Here is where, if I may be so bold, if we all lived up to that collective congregational promise at baptism for each child that gets baptized here, if I may be so bold to say, we would never be desperate for Sunday school teachers. If I might be so bold to say, we would never be desperate for Bible study leaders or people trying to start a Bible study group. We would never be so desperate for volunteers who are committed to bringing kids to church and sitting alongside them, if I may be so bold. In figuring out our faith, we experience ups and downs. Hopefully we're able to take and carry those ups, those mountaintop moments when we really understand our faith or we experience God's presence and we can take those moments and carry us, help have them carry us through the lows, the times we mess up or it feels like God has deserted us or during the storms of life. If we're so bold to live to those baptismal promises to teach others, bring others to the teach, to be taught, to experience those ups and downs. Ups and downs Peter has experienced are evident throughout our lessons this Lenten season. He has the ups of declaring Jesus is Messiah and gets praised for it. The downs, the fear amid a raging storm while trying to walk on water towards Christ. Being called out for when he didn't agree, when Jesus shared that God's plan for him was to be persecuted by the religious authorities leading to his death and resurrection. And he gets called out for it. But Peter's posture today in the scripture and his journey is humble and open. Something I know I certainly wish for, that I was more of humble and open. Absorbing Jesus' teachings like a sponge. So if we're to keep this Lenten theme, figuring out faith with Peter, with hearts that are prone to wander, we hear in this gospel Peter's willingness, eagerness, and need to continue to learn. There is a call in this life of faith be a follower of Jesus to be both taught and bring that teaching to others. It's a calling to listen and learn. Acknowledge how little we know can be a mark of mature faith. After being rebuked, Peter was probably questioning, does he actually know things? 
Christ still is his teacher. We had this moment even as pastors as we joked around this week when a five-year-old recently questioned their parent if Jonah was eaten by a whale or a big fish. One parent said a big fish, the other parent said a whale. It was made even funnier because the parents were both pastors. Well, if you go back to the original language in Hebrew, it's a big fish. And the ultimate source, ultimate source, King James Version. No, that's tongue in cheek. It's not the actual ultimate source. Hebrew is probably a better source. The King James Version says big fish. Yet our culture, especially American culture, has translated this story to include a whale. It seeped into our children's coloring books, our story Bibles, Sunday school teaching materials that most would recognize this story to have to include a whale. In the grand scheme of things, this change doesn't actually matter. It doesn't corrupt the story. It really doesn't matter if it's a whale or a fish. You can make the case that a whale is just a big fish but we'll not get into biology or anything like that. Grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter. But there are other biblical images that we've carried with us through our storytelling, artwork, more recently movies and other media that do change what's written in the Bible to be adapted to our culture. Similarly, this ha is happening for Peter. As a Jewish man, he has been carrying stories, biblical and cultural, about the correct ways to worship God, how to live faithfully in community, and how God is sending the Messiah to redeem the world. As we heard last week, an experience with Peter being called out last week, in the last two weeks, he declares Jesus as Messiah, but that isn't prepared what that Messiah means. He was taught in the synagogues that the Messiah would be conquering with war and they would prosper. But Jesus says and comes as a suffering servant and declare he would be dying and rising from the grave. An important lesson Peter had to listen to, but challenged what was happening and talked about in his community. And in today's story, his openness to learn continues to go beyond what he thought he already knew. In learning the law, it was established to have clear boundaries for the Israelites, to be set apart from all the other nations in the way, first, they worshiped the one true God, and lived, and second, and lived a, in a community that wasn't consumed by capitalism. Of course, there was laws that set them apart as a different religion, like laws about not sacrificing children. That, that's a little bit different from other cultures. Clear boundary. Then there's other ones that were separate from other cultures, like the restoration of land, the freedom from working as an indentured servant after a set number of years. Because people were never stricken into poverty. People never found an exceeding abundance of wealth when you were able to be free from indentured servitude, when your land that you had to settle off to keep your family al al alive and afloat was returned to you after a whole generation had passed. No one slipped below the line, below what everyone else had. No one had the ability to have extravagance Well least in the ways the laws were written. Because was this practiced faithfully? No. Hence the need for Jesus. And then we have to hear Jesus teaching. Jesus was teaching about forgiveness, and it grows the Jewish understanding of community. Forgiving someone was such a high number as the Jesus views 70 times 7 it's to reflect a boundless amount of times you are to forgive. It's infinite. Not to say that you continue to allow yourself to be hurt, because healthy boundaries, you are also beloved, you shouldn't be hurt. But forgiveness is to be abundant. And when you have abundant forgiveness, 
that seeps into your community. Your community is radically changed. But when we hear this about forgiveness, it's definitely something we need to learn. How many of us need to be reminded about forgive your neighbor? The extent of how many times you got to keep on forgiving. It's probably a good reminder every so often that we have to hear in church. But with this is also a call to teach others. This teaching about forgiveness is a community-oriented goal, a response, a call for community. Because forgiveness cannot happen in isolation, and certainly neither can reconciliation or restoration. There are times you have to bring in others, someone who will be a third party to help you bridge a gap. The movement towards wholeness is a movement towards one another. God has always been teaching about living in a community, not separated or isolated from others. And Peter, the rock, and the other disciples will soon be commissioned to share this knowledge about Jesus with others, a first-hand account. And they will build up this community of followers to continue to learn and live by these teachings of Jesus as he shared. And the best way for ourselves to live by these teachings in community is to teach others in community these same things. The best way to forgive and practice forgiving others is to teach others, especially as living examples, about forgiving others an infinite amount of times. Again, while using healthy boundaries to not harm yourself or others but forgiving again and again and again. The promise we make as parents, sponsors, and indeed as a whole congregation at baptism is a call to teach the word and have it be at the center of our lives here in this space. At confirmation, we affirm this call on our own by taking that responsibility for ourselves for our own baptism into our own hands as we grow in faith. It could also be understood that in teaching, even in leading a Sunday school class or a Bible study, mentoring others, there are boundless opportunities for you to continue learning about who God is. It takes courage to move forward in faith, to be open to learning, to persevere and share the knowledge with others. Courage. Peter shows us in today's lesson that in figuring out our own faith, we have to have courage to be open to learn, making mistakes, stumbling, asking question after question like a tenacious toddler, even when it seems like they're a boundless questions. We have to ask God, teach me. And then the next step is we ask the kids, Listen. We have to be listening. To be good learners, to be taught, is listening. It can all be summed up now in a simple prayer that you can practice. To be taught to teach is to ask God this prayer. God, teach me. Amen. Amen. Our hymn of the day is our theme hymn for this season of Lent. So listen and sing that word teach in this hymn and find it and discover all those words that we've been phrases saying throughout this Lenten season.
In response to the good news, we proclaim the words that we've been taught are the summary of our faith. As we are able, please stand as we proclaim the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the Church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the Covenant, through the Church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Give us courage to teach others and to be learners continuously of your word. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of all living things. Help us be stewards of your creation, both near and far, to preserve, protect, and care for your land. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. We especially lift up those in our prayers, Rashila, Roberta, Colleen, Noreen, Kathy, Sandy, Mark, Dennis, and others who are in our thoughts and on our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us extend that peace and forgiveness with our neighbors. We extend that to those who worship with us online. Peace be with you. our offering and have a few announcements here on the choir sharing the peace. I hope everyone got peace together and peace was shared. Uh, some announcements for uh, us to share. Many things that are on the calendar coming up and uh, things you should be aware of. What you want to be aware of is these purple forms you need to fill out for Easter flowers. And if you would like your name written in the bulletin of in memory and honor of, and you are allowed fl different flowers. It don't have to be just Easter lilies, because it's a lot for the person who stands up here around, surrounded by like 10 different lilies. It's a strong smell. Also, if you could take out the pollen, I would so appreciate it. So Easter flowers, love to see some color up here uh, and for you to bring those in. It is Palm Sunday next Sunday. And so Sunday school children will be singing and waving palm branches in the beginning of our worship service. So uh, maybe scoot in a whole foot from the edge of the pew so you don't get whacked by some children. There was one last year, I think, that would whack people accidentally. Um, so here's your warning. So Palm Branch is next Sunday, and so a lot of people will be in worship. Uh, and this week is our last Wednesday service before we have Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. 
Monday, Thursday is out at Faith, Good Friday here, and then we are going to be doing a sunrise service in addition to our regular worship time. And I think that's everything that is coming up, otherwise you can just read it in your bulletin. Anything not in the bulletin that needs to be announced? Not seeing anyone? All right, let us stand and receive our offering.
All are welcome. Bread for the journey, a feast for hungry hearts. Come. <laughs>
hear, believe that this blessing is most certainly for you. Beloved wanderer, as you leave this place, may you carry your curious heart on your sleeve. May you look for God in every face. May you find courage to get out of the boat, to run to the tomb, to speak your faith. And when the world falls apart, may you hear God's voice within saying, take heart as I, be not afraid. You are called, you are blessed in both your ups and downs. You are always belong to God. Go now in peace. Go trusting that good news. Amen. Our sending hymn is hymn number 518.